<clears throat> Let's begin with silence together. So first dropping into our bodies. through paying attention to the process of breathing, the moment by moment procession of events that we feel. and feeling our feet on the ground, the pressure on our bottoms as we sit, whatever sensations you might be feeling, you notice them now. And bringing your awareness to your heart. It's through this that we can feel the great ground of being. That ocean of awareness and compassion that gives rise to all of us, all of us waves. So this isn't an origin story from long ago, but it's happening every moment. Each of us is a unique wave made of ocean. And joined with all of our fellow waves. And perhaps each of us in our own way has come to this moment together out of a wish for benefit for ourselves and all of our fellow waves. And so you might reflect on your particular purpose for coming here tonight. And beyond Zoom, underneath Zoom, we can feel into the presence of each other on this call. Because we actually are connected underneath in that vast way, through that vast ocean. And so we rest in that presence and each other's presence. As you all know, <clears throat> tonight, we're gonna be doing some reflecting together on uh, this whole war in Ukraine that we've all been reading about and feeling into in one way or another. Um, so I think all of us, our hearts have gone out to the people of Ukraine who have been escaping with whatever they could carry, sometimes shot at while they're escaping. Um, and then many of the men have stayed behind to fight what looks like hopeless odds. Um, and I remember seeing a post from a rock star in uniform 
a Ukrainian rock star um, who was saying, yeah, of course, I'm going to fight for my country. Um, you know, they just barely won their freedom and they're going to fight for it. And everyone is amazed at their courage and um, horrified by some of the suffering we've been reading about. Of course, as I then hear about everybody's hearts going out to them, I think, well, isn't that interesting? I mean, right on our own doorstep, we have refugees coming from horrible situations, uh, equal amounts of suffering from Central America, all over Central America, South America, um, and other parts of the world, Afghanistan, Syria, and so on. Um, and I heard uh, a Middle Eastern American say, you know, it's so crazy because somehow I'm also thinking of Ukrainians as being more like me than Afghani people who are refugees from that horrible situation and so on. And she said, it's just, you know, what, what is that with this us them thinking? Uh, and I've really looked at this us them thinking um, and something that I found fascinating was this book called Blind Spot, um, put out by a couple of um, social scientists. And um, they were trying to solve what many of their fellow social scientists were trying to solve, which was how could they catch people in the act of being prejudiced? Because on the tests, everybody would give the right answers. And then we, then they would get up and behave in a prejudiced way in everyday life. So how could they catch those um, unconscious biases is the, the, coin, uh, the term that they coined. Well, they were able to um, fashion a test and it's in the book, Blind Spot. So you might be interested to um, buy the book, take the test. Another thing that book talks about is, um, that we process us people versus them people in different parts of our brain, which is embarrassing to think about, you know, concerning the, the fact that we're all human. And so as a, a human being, I'm embarrassed for us. Um, and also kind of horrified. It's like, oh my gosh, how do we work with that? That sounds like it's baked in. And I, I guess I can understand why it was baked in because of uh, tribes needing to um, keep their integrity and you know protect their hunting grounds and so on and so forth. Okay, but now we're in these times and it's really working against us. I, I think that might be the understatement of the evening. So um, how can we circumvent that? Well, Stay tuned because the practice at the end does exactly that. Very clever way that it does that. And uh, spoiler alert, it does it by helping us to get to where we can define everybody as us. That's how. Getting back to the situation in Ukraine. Um, so, not only are we moved by compassion and horrified by some of the things we're reading and seeing, uh, but we're also afraid because it looks like Putin will stop at nothing. We're concerned about World War III, biological warfare, nuclear warfare. Um, and so both because of um, compassion exhaustion and, and overwhelm, and anxiety for both of those reasons. Uh, and perhaps a third one, anger, we might go numb. We might fall into numbness. And that's a problem. It's a problem for the world because the world needs us not to be numb. It needs us to be able to act. And we need for us not to be numb. We need to have our hearts open and available. So um, that's a difficult path to walk, isn't it? 
Joanna Macy, who is one of the original voices of the, the environmental movement and who's also a longtime, very serious Buddhist practitioner. Um, she talks about this numbness regarding um, you know, the environmental disaster that's slowly unfolding. Uh, and in workshops, she was focusing on helping people to wake up out of their numbness and be able to move through their grief into action. So it, I invite you to consider doing that. And we'll do a little bit of that tonight, although we don't have so much time together. <clears throat> so um, I think another reason we fall into numbness is feeling that we're helpless. And um, I, I think uh, many of you are aware of GoFundMe campaigns and so on and so forth. So I'm not gonna go into those. Uh, I'm hoping that we can share some on our sort of activism page at Namchok so that you feel like, you know, there's some place you can go for that information. Um, and maybe there are some actions you feel like you can take. So, um, you know, please, if you find groups doing, um, you know, help for refugees, uh, mm, letter writing campaigns to encourage people, I mean, there could be all manner of campaigns to help. Um, you know, please share that with us, info at namchok.org, uh, so that we can put them on the page. So um, I still think though, that maybe a major source of this numbness is the overwhelm when we feel just horrified and it, uh, deep grief um, with the people who are suffering. Um, so uh, Valerie Kaur, who um, talks about revolutionary love, she said, um, you know, maybe we need to think about it this way, that through our grieving with them, we join with them. And if we do believe that we're all fellow waves on this ocean and sharing that same water, there's a way in which we are feeling them. And so that grief is genuine, whether we numb ourselves to it or not. And our grieving with them and being with them they feel that too. And so that's doing something right there. So right now I'm thinking of a story um, of three major students of this great Lama. This happened some time ago. Um, so they all went off after studying with him and they did their various things. And so another student had visited them all and came to see the old Lama. And he said, well, how are they doing? How is this one? And I don't remember the names of any of them. And the one, uh, so the student said, oh yes, I visited him. He's a great scholar and he has a great seminary and many students and um, he's doing very well. Uh, and he said, how about so-and-so? How is he doing? Oh yes, he's a great Lama and has a monastery and you know all these great works that he's doing and everything. Ah yes, and how about this one? And the student said, oh, I'm sorry, that one? He just sits in a field all day with his prayer shawl over his head, crying for the suffering of the world. And the Lama said, ah yes, he was always my favorite student. So I invite you uh, to spend a little time reflecting right now and allowing yourselves to feel for a bit. We're all very busy. We're all very overwhelmed. Here is a moment when you have space and time and the invitation just to feel. 
So if you have a uh, pen and paper handy, you might journal. Otherwise you can just sit there, whatever you like, and feel free to um, share in the chat uh, if you feel to share anything. So let's take a sigh together and settle in. For a moment, imagine yourself as a mother with children there in Ukraine. There's no food or heat or electricity or water. You're trying to help your children. They're crying and then finally they stop crying because they're just in shock. And maybe you and your family are fleeing, leaving your husband behind with the danger. And we've all read the story, so you can roll the camera forward. And now you might imagine yourself to be the father of that family, staying to fight. Now you might imagine yourself to be a Russian soldier who's been lied to and tricked into coming there and can't go home. Now you might imagine yourself to be a Russian citizen who can't protest, but hates the war. A Russian citizen who is suffering because they've lost, lost their livelihood suddenly. If you want to pick one of these to really focus on, you could do that now. And maybe you're starting to feel like you'd like to share with others in the chat. If you do, please go ahead.
Any more sharing that somebody would like to do? So I want to speak a little bit about action. Once we allow ourselves to feel, then we feel moved to action somehow, if we're moved by compassion. What can often happen, though, is that it moves into righteous wrath, which is really just a form of being pissed off. And that's not going to contribute to a solution. I don't think that's going to be helpful. So we've seen battles back and forth. I happen to be Jewish, so um, there's been, you know, a uh, feud going on in the Middle East for thousands of years, and it hasn't solved anything. It's just promoted more suffering. Yet in Tibetan Buddhist understanding, there is such a thing as wrathful action. So that means remaining in your heart, remaining compassionate, and yet acting decisively. So um, that is something, that is an option that we have. And we'll see what the West does if we can manage to act not in retribution that just keeps things churning around and around, but wrathful action that just cuts through because it's motivated by compassion. So all of this is leading to one of my very favorite practices from Tibetan Buddhism, which is Donglen, a compassion practice. Many of you know this practice, and we don't have time for me to you know, go through a whole teaching about it, but I will uh, say a little bit and then walk you through it. So, uh, and if you want to have me walk you through it many, many times, as many times as you like, there are recordings of me doing this and teaching this online. So you can click on those and I will tirelessly lead you through it. So you can train in compassion in that way, which is very popular with Tibetans. So, Donglin means uh, taking and sending. Um, so what, the essence of compassion is we feel for another, compassion, right? Feeling with. And we want to take that suffering away and we want to replace it with happiness. That is the basis of Donglin. So um, we, we do this beginning with ourselves. And that's important, especially I think for us Westerners, because uh, we've been programmed to think we uh, aren't worthy of compassion or some such thing. But every wave on the ocean is worthy of compassion, including ourselves. And I don't know how we have a real basis for love and compassion for others if we don't have it in ourselves, you know, as the basis. So that's where we start. And then we step it out, out, out in concentric circles to include eventually all beings. And it's known as one of the four immeasurable or boundless qualities because it reaches uh, the boundless numbers of sentient beings. So <clears throat> we'll begin, oh, but first let me say, for those of you who don't know Donglin, um, the way you take the suffering away from the other is to breathe in that suffering. And, and so you're using breath and also um, your imagination to see in your mind's eye that suffering in the form of a dense, thick, heavy cloud. 
So we um, see that suffering person, we breathe in that cloud right into our hearts. And you can think, oh, that's the opposite of what I normally do. Well, probably. And then you breathe out joy for them, right? So that would seem the opposite of what we would like to do. But we've tried the normal way and look where we are and where the world is. So, you know, often Buddhist practices ask us to do something different. So why not? So luckily, we don't have to take on all that um, suffering. We can um, use our doors as um, a doorway into that vast ocean of awareness. The seat of our mind is in our heart. And so by our compassionate mind heart, we can do this alchemy of taking that suffering in, allowing it to go through into the vast ocean of awareness that is the basis of, of us all. And it's not gonna hurt the vast ocean at all. And that ocean, one of the qualities of it is compassion, another is love, and another is joy. And that then is an endless fountain from which we can draw through our compassionate hearts that are connected. I mean, that very compassion is a quality of the ocean that's coming through, right? That we are made of, right? So through our compassionate hearts, we can draw that joy out and breathe it into the person we're focusing on. We breathe it out, the, the suffering out, and breathe the joy into them. Okay, so we begin with ourselves. Let's begin. So let's imagine our suffering self that's overwhelmed with the suffering of the world, as well as our own suffering. We have to be alive to that, no matter how small it may seem compared to other people's suffering. We have to start there. And so we breathe in the dense, heavy clouds of suffering of this little one in our hearts, this little version of ourselves that is the suffering one. We breathe that in. Into the vast ocean. And from that vast ocean, we exhale joy, filling up that suffering one with bright, spacious, billowing clouds of this joy, seeing it soaking in. And once more. And now we imagine somebody, maybe a face we've seen in the news of somebody suffering in Ukraine. We don't want them to suffer. We want to take it away. And so we breathe in that experience of suffering as those heavy, dense, stormy clouds right through our hearts. into the vast ground of being. And on the exhale, through our compassionate intense, intent, we can draw the joy of that ground of being and send it again through our intent into that person. The billowing bright clouds soaking into them. Their face begins to soften and change. And we breathe again. The joy for them soaking into them the joy of now and always and the relief of their suffering. 
one more breath. And now we breathe in the suffering of all the Ukrainians, those who have escaped, those who haven't, all of them. Coming in all at once as those stormy clouds through our compassionate hearts into the compassionate ground of being. And through our compassionate intent, the power of our mind can direct the joy from that vast ground into all of those people who are suffering. And another breath. And then we think of all of the refugees and all of the people in war-torn war areas all over the world. Those that are in that state right now and in recent years, we breathe in all of that suffering through our hearts into the ground of being. And on the exhale, great, vast joy through the lens of our hearts and then out into all of them. Bright billowing clouds, enveloping them all, sinking into them and bringing them deep, lasting joy. And then another breath for all of them, as well as anyone who's been in that sort of situation ever, because time isn't actually linear. And so that would include everybody. We breathe for everyone, breathing in the suffering, through our hearts into the ground of being, and then on the exhale, through the lens of our compassionate heart and the power of our compassionate intent in our minds, out to all and everyone. And one more breath. Imagine if everyone or a critical mass of people were doing this, even just this, regularly, what a difference it might make. And so we dedicate our efforts tonight to the peace and relief of suffering, happiness, and the full waking up of everyone. Thank you.